So this is all working fine. Now what we need to do is actually make a change from version 0 to version 1 effectively. So I go to the library. I'll just add the word strong modified and we'll go and increment manually uh, the actual assembly version number and we'll rebuild this. Okay, so we now have our library here and we're going to replace just one of the two DLLs, just this one here, the one that was compiled a little bit later. And what we should find is that this will no longer run. So clientapp.exe doesn't actually load. Effectively, if we allow it to show the error message properly, once it's thrown the exception, we can see that the error that we get is a file load exception. Could not load file or assembly library, version number, and public key token. So essentially, it didn't find the right version number, and it wasn't happy to load it. So now what we want to do is we actually want to turn our attention to seeing, now that we've seen how to create a strongly named assembly, we now want to look at the different options for how to force this application to use the new library. So we have three ways of doing this. The first way applies mainly to private assemblies and it allows us to create an application configuration file on behalf of the client application to redirect this one client only to the new version. Options 2 and 3 are really only used if you're installing your assemblies into the GAC, the Global Assembly Cache, and this allows us to have sort of a, a global value set in the machine.config file so that all clients point to the new version. And the third option is called a publisher policy file, which is produced by whoever is producing the actual class library itself. And that is also installed into the GAC. And we'll do all three of these options as we go through our demonstration. So, first thing we want to do is look at creating a config file just for this one executable. The easiest way to do this is actually to use the .NET framework configuration utility probably seen this guy before. And what we want to do is go down to the applications section. We want to add an application that we want to configure. We then hit the other button and we browse for our executable. We then right mouse click and view the properties or also do it from here as well from this link. Actually sorry it's not the properties it's the list of configured assemblies. I got myself confused there for a second. The configured assemblies is where we can actually configure an assembly that this client app is using. We get this dialog box and the best option to choose in this case is to choose an assembly from the list of assemblies this application is using. We hit choose assembly and it should only show us the libraries that our actual client application is using. And in this case, of course, we want the library value. We select it, finish, and then we go into the binding policy tab. This is where we can essentially say, I were, was compiled against version 0, but I'm willing to use version 1. And we press OK. This then goes and creates for us a clientapp.exe.config, in other words, an application configuration file. If we have a look into that, the only bit that we're really interested in is inside this dependent assembly section. And what we have here is we have the fact that our assembly, our library, has a public key token. This must match what is stored inside the client exe internally, and it must match the public key of the actual DLL itself changing this value here in the note in the actual using notepad would have no effect whatsoever. So here we have the option of choosing the version number and choosing where to redirect it to. Initially we're taking the old version number and we're going to take the version 0 and then we're going to create it, point it to version 1. 
Okay, so we've redirected our version numbers and we should simply be able to run this now and it should use the new version. So notice it says strong modified, quite happily running the new version. If we go to the backup folder, he's still running the original strong version because that's the version he was compiled against and .NET assemblies will always run against the version they were compiled against unless they're told to do a different thing, unless they're told to run a, a different version number. So the config file is one way of doing this. The problem with the config file is that the config file is attached really to the executable. It's nothing individually to do with the assembly, to do with the DLL itself. It's just to do with the client exe. And if you're going to be shipping this out to lots of places, this is not really ideal to have to perhaps ship out lots of these different config files, especially when it's actually this guy that's being updated, not this guy. So there's got to be some alternatives. The other two alternatives, however, both involve placing our libraries in the GAC. So what I'm going to do firstly is take our original version 0 and put him into the GAC. And we can do that by going to the assembly cache folder and then we can add an assembly to the assembly cache. And then we're going to find the backup DLL and add it in here. Now don't forget to put anything into the GAC, it must be strongly named. So here is our strongly named library version 0 with the public key token. We can now delete this DLL and I can run the exe and it still works because it's now finding it centrally in the GAC location under the Windows folder structure. Now what we want to do is put the second DLL also into the GAC and just to show you a different way of doing it we're just going to do it from the .NET command prompt this time and we're going to use GAC util slash install and give it the library name itself. So the assembly has now been added to the cache. We can see that again by refreshing the value and you can see there are now two versions of our library in the GAC. At this point we no longer need this DLL either. So the original backup version is still running the version it was compiled against, version 0. This guy is running against the second version because it was the second version that his config file was telling him to use and the second version is in the GAC so therefore they both work quite happily.